Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. We are facing some very difficult and challenging times, not only in our lives, but also in our practices. Joining me is Dr. Fernando Kim. He's the Chief of Urology at Denver Health Medical Center and Director of uh, Minimally Invasive Urological Oncology, Professor at the University of Colorado, uh, Denver. and uh, Fernando, you are at the epicenter of a major trauma center, and I'm sure you're being inundated with cases of uh, and questions about COVID-19. So I was wondering if you could share those uh, with uh, our urology audience here. Sure, David. Um, this is a uh, very unusual time with uh, rapidly evolving circumstances and um, we'll actually uh, expect recommendations to change rapidly. So I think we must be very flexible as the situation changes, uh, procedures and updates from appropriate agencies will continue to happen to protect not only our patient's health, but also the healthcare provider's uh, health, including our urologic community. Well, we keep uh, getting a lot of uh, questions about uh, uh, what to do and also about the COVID-19, which is the disease um, caused by the uh, virus that is known by SARS-CoV-2. So being a healthcare provider, we must understand the capacity of our ICU beds, respirators, uh, personal protective equipments, uh, uh, and healthcare providers workforce. So uh, this is all uh, very important to uh, really understand and know. Flexibility uh, to follow recommendations and uh, also keep in mind the capacity and how to protect yourself uh, uh, as a healthcare provider. Um, also, we uh, keep uh, getting a lot of questions who to follow, uh, what are the recommendations to follow? Well, decisions should be made on a local regional level, uh, considering the risks and resources specific to each area, but uh, we have learned a lot, a lot of uh, important lessons from other countries. So they're gonna be uh, go uh, government and health uh, uh, agencies that will give you the appropriate uh, recommendations. Please um, uh, remember that uh, as soon as you uh, have an idea that the patient may have fever, cough, or uh, shortness of breath, they may have those primary symptoms of uh, COVID-19. And uh, uh, these this symptoms may appear uh, up to 14 days. That's what we know after the exposure. So it is important to understand uh, how to protect yourselves and uh, in cases uh, that you have to care for the COVID-19 patients, uh, the N95 masks are uh, very important uh, to protect yourself. And uh, I encourage you to uh, know exactly what are the sizes uh, that may fit uh, uh, best for you. Um, in order to do that, it is important to talk to your hostel and, uh, and get the N95 mask fitted for your face. I think uh, those are important concepts that uh, the urologist may, uh, must have. And these are the questions that we, uh, we have been addressing so far. Thanks for that discussion, Fernando. Uh, um, uh, another question is, what should urologists do to manage your practices? Uh, should they be uh, closing their offices, limiting 
uh, new patients, what do you do with surgeries you have scheduled, elective surgeries, things like that. Um, there are a lot of questions that I'm hearing out there, and I, I don't know we're getting a lot of direction from uh, various organizations on uh, what to do with this. So I'd appreciate your thoughts. Right. Um, we uh, actually have uh, very good, uh, reliable information from the CDC uh, and also the AUA, the American Urological Association, uh, is providing some guidance uh, during these really difficult ca uh, times. So the elective surgeries uh, cancellations uh, align with the uh, U.S. Surgeon General's uh, recommendations that hospitals stop performing elective procedures to prevent the spread of the novel uh, coronavirus. And uh, uh, we have to think about preserving the capacity and hospital intensive care units as well as equipment and staff. Um, but of course, if you have a case that uh, of a case of a metastasizing uh, cancer that is uh, debilitating the patient, and uh, um, you should proceed with the uh, the surgery, uh, you have to also uh, bring to the discussion that this patient may need further care, ICU uh, stay, and that can increase the chances of uh, um, having the COVID-19. And um, this is a, a very difficult ethical and uh, uh, medical challenge. And uh, that has to be uh, discussed with the patient and you must consider uh, the consequences of doing that procedure. Um, I think the mo in terms of uh, the uh, the clinic uh, and your ambulatory uh, care of these patients, first uh, you have to educate your clinic staff uh, about the screening, the prevention, protection uh, systems, and uh, procedures that uh, uh, you have to uh, protect yourselves against SARS-CoV-2. Uh, think about uh, uh, starting a telehealth uh, phone visit uh, and also document. And the question uh, would be, how are we gonna get reimbursement from those visits? Um, and I know that Medicare and private insurers are studying reimbursement methods for telehealth. And uh, I really encourage the uh, uh, practitioner to contact the insurance companies and get more information about Medicare or, uh, and reimbursement for telehealth. Um, so I think those are general concepts about uh, uh, cancellation of procedures and also how to uh, uh, take care of your clinic. Really appreciate your uh, comments. If you have any more, uh, let me know. Uh, and I uh, might ask you, are there any websites or anything else that you can recommend that we uh, post on this topic? And we look forward to uh, talking to you along the way as we uh, work our way through this crisis. Thanks very much for your time. Right. Uh, I would encourage individual physicians to work closely with their hospital systems to ensure that patients' uh, needs are being met. Um, and that time-sensitive procedures are not rendering this inaccessible. Um, and also the sites that I think you should be following uh, and get, getting information uh, during this crisis is the CDC and the uh, American Urological Association websites. I think those are the websites that can give you uh, really reliable information.